So, I am very excited to have this time with you. And uh, my goal today is to help you to see yourselves in a completely different way. Uh, our work here at the Light Institute is all about higher consciousness. It's all about being able to go into many dimensions and come back and to utilize the actual potential of our human form, which includes bilocation and levitation and all kinds of magical things that we don't think of in our daily lives, but that this body is capable of. Uh, in this book, The Ageless Body, I made a statement, I said, our body is not just bones and blood and muscles. It is something more. It is something of many layers. And if we begin to discover those layers, it will change our experience in body. And, and a couple of years ago, I began a book called Potential Body, Helix of Enlightened Health. And the concept of that was that if we began to use our consciousness to uh, whisper to our body, to listen to our bodies, we could begin to do the things that we've only heard masters do. And we need that at this time on the planet. Uh, we need to be able to feel that we can heal a bone, uh, or that we can uh, command our body, that we can be ageless. Uh, that, that it is not about uh, making our bodies young, it's about making our bodies new. And a new body is something that's been hiding, has been whispering to us through eons of time. All of us have memories. Even if we call those psychogenetic memories of your father's father's father, your mother's mother's mother, or someone else in your tribe who lived a long life, who had a healthy body, who passed down to you qualities. And during this day, we'll be looking at what are the psychogenetic qualities that we have inherited? Because so often we say, and we'll be talking about all of this together, this is a very informal conversation. What is it you love about your body? Or where are your strong points, the strong qualities of your body? And where do you think you have weakness in your body? And from whom did you get that? And how do we shift that? Because science is advancing so rapidly now that we recognize that our genes is another layer of the body. The genes are nothing but paired letters. They're just paired letters. We can use consciousness and shift those pairs. So we're not stuck. We're not stuck with our genetic coding. Uh, we're not stuck with anything. What we're stuck with is the limitation of our consciousness, our minds, to perceive our body, to actually get in our body. And uh, people who focus on uh, higher octaves that focus on spirituality tend to have a psychogenetic imprint that says the human body is not perfect. It's, it's even, for some religions, it's even a little bit dirty. It's not divine. What a, what a strange concept is that? Because we can clone. I, I know that the Germans, the Russians, the Americans, and the Japanese have all cloned humans years ago. But they can't make it right. They can clone the body, but they can't do anything about this, this thing that we have called the spirit, the soul, the, the, and the purpose of being in form. And I myself have had six near-death experiences, so I've passed the veil six times. They said, she's dead, and come back. And I learned something, and learned a lot from that. One is, you don't get out of your body until you're ready, unless you supersede mm -hmm. something. And so we want to begin to say, okay, here I am. How can I use life? That's what my own inner voice said to me during uh, several of those death experiences when I came back. Use life. And what does that mean? It certainly means to go beyond the squabbles or the stress or the struggles of daily life. Uh, but to be able to see purpose in each thing. So if we can stand away on some levels and see that. And it's amazing, and we'll be looking at that, that every part of the body, your right wrist instead of your left wrist, every part of your body speaks of a constellation of purpose. So that's why if you get this disease or that accident, it's telling a story. My very first uh, body teacher, spiritual teacher, 
was a curandera, which means a healer, in Mexico, an old lady. And she said to me, whole in the spirit, whole in the body. By which she meant that if you hurt your body, or something happens to your body, it's your spirit talking to you. Doesn't mean that you're less spiritual because you hurt yourself. It means this right here is different than someplace else and it has a meaning. And so we'll be going through our bodies, we'll be scanning our bodies, we'll be looking at the bodies on the physical level, what are the conversations, on the psychogenetic, the inheritance levels, and beyond. Now we're going to look at the essence of the body. The body is made of oxygen and hydrogen and nitric oxide and carbon, and not carbon dioxide, and uh, all of ozone, all of these specific elements. And if we begin to pluck them, we begin to focus on them, and then uh, we can shift something in our body. We know enough about certain kinds of diseases now to really begin to come away from the idea, just fix the outside, but look at how it happens. And so my, my perception of the body is its environment. What is happening in the inside of your body? In Western medicine, we think about the muscles and the bones and the blood and the lymph and, and all of those conversations. But in the Eastern traditions, uh, we look at it in a different way. And so we want to be able to get down, uh, get in to our bodies in, in new ways. And that's my uh, proposal for today, is to begin to access and to know your body. This is a series that belongs to that book, A Potential Body. Uh, and today is the first one, and it's really about you and your body. It's about getting to know your body and to wield that awareness uh, back and forth. Because it's not only commanding the body, but it's also listening to the body. And when we listen to the body, uh, most of our discomfort falls away. And uh, we can use consciousness to, to dissolve pain, to reconstruct. Uh, but the body is, my own higher self says that the two most important relationships you have in your lifetime is, first of all, your higher self, which is your own inner voice, your own knowing. One. And the second, your body. Because the body is faithful to you. The body doesn't want to hurt you, and yet most of us feel as if any second our body is going to betray us. It's going to have an accident. It's going to do something that, that is, uh, puts us in jeopardy. And we don't realize our part in it. And so the beautiful thing about exploring the body is to come away from what is wrong and what is right. Uh, you're not going to hear me talk about nutrition here. I was a nutritionist in the Peace Corps when I was very young. Uh, every day we change our idea about what the body needs. What I know is that every body is different. Uh, what may be good for you at one moment may be bad for you at another moment. How will you know? You ask an outside expert? No. You have to ask your body. And so I'm going to show you today, and we're going to play a lot of little games to verify that point for you, that your body is wanting to talk to you. It's wanting to tell you, please give me this. Please don't stuff that into me, uh, etc. And so for me, this relationship with the body is uh, very exciting. It, it holds everything. Where does our sexual energy come from? Where does our passion come from? Where does our strength? It all comes from inside the body. It doesn't come from the outside. And with the technology we have today, we tend to uh, look at ourselves through the mirror of the outside world. And so our process today is to look at ourselves from the inside environment and to discover how incredible are our bodies, how incredible it is to be on the planet at this time. That's why I began that book, because I realized as I was you know, stretching out the consciousness conversation that there's too much pain, there's too much suffering in the physical form. And um, we, need to have, we need our bodies to help us. If, if you have a pain in your body, you will not be thinking, you will not be using your intellect for extraneous things. 
the body will pull your consciousness back and say, hey, I hurt here, and what are you going to do about it? Help me. And so uh, we need to, to be able to understand those kinds of conversations and discover that when we pay attention to what the body is saying, the imbalances dissolve away in ways that we would think that they might not. So uh, I hope this will be a wonderful adventure for you today. And I need for you and want for you to really converse with me because I want this to be your story. It is your story. And that's why uh, I realized that all of these different modalities of healing, which most of which I have studied, uh, are not the answer. The answer is very simple, which is always true. Uh, the most powerful truth is simple. And uh, it comes from inside us. It doesn't come uh, from somebody's idea. Uh, I was playing with you and talking about the cookie cutter, galactic, you know. We're, there are, we have structures and uh, we shape our bodies, our physical form specifically. And I love the fact that I have a family here because we'll be looking at that. The person that you look the most like in your family is the one that you have uh, usually the most genetic encoding, obviously physically, but also emotionally. So we're going to look at how many bodies we have. We don't just have this one body. We have a number of bodies. We have a primordial body, a sexual body, an emotional body, a mental body, a physical body, a spiritual body. That's a lot of bodies. And they're all moving together, but they are very specific in how they function. And if we begin to recognize, oh, physically, I'm doing fine, but I'm too tired or I'm depressed. Because pretty soon, if you're depressed, your physical body's going to start to unwind. They are very much connected. And so and I want to explore with you not only all of those layers of our, of our form, let's say, but also genetically, I, uh, we have a physical, a human body. We have a devic genetic encoding, which means that, I don't know this scientifically, uh, for example, you're only 0.04, I believe it is, different genetically than a frog. Kind of a shocking idea. Uh, that's not very far uh, of separation. We know that your furthest cousin genetically on this planet is only your 44th cousin. That is a very, very small genetic pool. Uh, so we have this human DNA, we have uh, this uh, the deviant DNA, which is our relationship to nature. Um, uh, everyone has been very focused on how close we are to the apes. Uh, it's a theory that I haven't ever really uh, embraced completely. Um, uh, and then we have angelic DNA. And then we have galactic DNA. So we have all of these structures of, of reality that through our consciousness, we can wield, we can pull in. Um, uh, sometimes, for example, your emotional body might feel a uh, sadness. Uh, I remember one time I was working in the men's penitentiary in Bolivia, and I had just witnessed the result of torture and was kind of trying to patch that up. And when I went back to my place, I just cried and cried and cried at human inhumanity. And I felt that I couldn't handle uh, this kind of energy. And all of a sudden, I felt this beautiful, embracing cloud. It was like a lavender-colored cloud that surrounded and embraced me. And I lived in an area, uh, they called it the Valley of the Moon. And there are purple cliffs there that you can climb. And it was the energy of these cliffs that came and surrounded me and literally said to me, but we are with you. Why are you crying? You know, because it was me uh, feeling so alone and so inadequate and all those conversations. I know that each one of you have some story like that. A story certainly of feeling inadequate or afraid in your body. Um, and when we, when we have fear or or 
we feel vulnerable, we contract. When we contract, we have no power, we have no strength, we have no way to step forward through something. And so fear is, my higher self says, that the only disease on the planet is fear. And uh, it's sometimes hard for us to recognize that uh, a disease or something or an accident that happens to us could have a fear element. But that element could be something you've been carrying from the time you were a child. Uh, every time a mother or a father says, ah, there's a spider, look out! And then you wonder why you're afraid of spiders years later. It's because you imprint into your brain, into the old brain, which is in the back of the head, uh, that immediate uh, passage of fear, that legacy that goes from the parent, who's, it's not the parent's fault, they are simply trying to protect you. But that powerful energy coming out of them into you will stay a lifetime until someday you have some way to come to that. And we have thousands and thousands of points of fear uh, or anxieties in our bodies that we, we don't even have a name for it. We don't even recognize that we have those energies. And, and so what we want to do today is to discard old energy and come to a place where we can actually trust our body. Again, even if your body hurts you, if there's something wrong with your body at the moment, but to trust that your body, given a little encouragement from you, will actually heal itself. It knows how to do it much better than we do with our intellectual minds. So I think that the first thing that we'll do is to um, do an exercise about fear, fear in your body. Sometimes people say, well, I'm not afraid of my body. I, here's a young, strong, strapping guy. You know, but if, if I were to poke it, there would be a place where there is that fear, because all of humans have that. Sometimes it's fear of death. Sometimes it's that's fear of uh, that the physical body will not bring us love. That's a very primordial, uh, uh, did I mention that we have primordial bodies? It's probably one of our more important focuses in terms of our sense of self as a primordial body. Uh, we carry infinite amount of information from uh, the beginning of tribes and the survival energies. How can we survive? <gasps> What's What's the possible danger there? Uh, and so, if we begin to see those things, we can remember them. Uh, it's, it's much more easy than you think to remove something from our body. We always think we have to do something that's very difficult or complicated. But in effect, the body wants to remove something that blocks it from its, its ageless, its its new sense of self, and it wants that, but it needs us to do it. It's like uh, it cannot survive on its own. And most people's bodies are surviving on their own because most people are not in their bodies. Uh, my higher self always refers to the talking head. This is where we live, up here. And we understand everything, we know everything up here. But what about here? What is the purpose of all these organs in Chinese medicine where we're very focused on each of our organs and what they do for us or what they're not doing for us? Uh, as a part of seeing, again, a hologram uh, of a matrix, something that composes the sense of self who we really are. So um, I'm going to have you ask your body where it holds your fear of your body. We have many fears. We have uh, intellectual fears, we have mental fears, we have spiritual fears. But right now, we want to look at where are you holding some fear about your body or of your body? Um, sometimes that fear is connected to, again, a deep primordial energy that says, I have to be accepted. I have to be a part of the tribe or I won't survive. And that's very true in past times. But we still carry those imprints uh, with us. And so uh, we want to be wrong. Breathe deep into your body. The breath is 
very important when you breathe. It allows the mind of the cell to relax. It allows the mind of the cell to open. Bring the consciousness back to that place in your body where you were holding the constriction either, of your body, about your body. And ask your body to show you the color that it needs, the frequency of light that it needs to release that fear. We don't have to carry that as a reference to who we are or a reference that creates matter, creates situations, creates reality. It doesn't serve us. This is how we change. So just ask your body what color it needs. And draw that color into your body, into that place. Just imagine it. Imagine pulling that color into that place and imagine the color just washes away the fear. So it's not a frame of reference for you. Chosen. Chosen is one of my favorite words. Because you've chosen, you've created an echo. Whether you are aware of it at that moment or not makes no difference. It's like choosing a direction. Science doesn't know literally where imagination comes from. What I know is that from I've been doing incarnational work for I think. 64 years. 64 years I've been doing incarnational work. And what I know is that, as you were talking about, you cannot make up, you cannot imagine something you don't already have a reference point. So when I talk about humans creating computers, what is that reference point? That reference point is a part of what is instilled in human neuro neurology, for example that we're not using yet. We burn our ne neurons, we burn ourselves, uh, uh, because we struggle so much. And so if you want to get a good idea, most people will say, well, uh, Freud, um, oh, I'm not just Freud, but, uh, all, many of the great thinkers, whether they were musicians or, or mathematics, they all said they got their wisdom in a dream. Why would that be so? It would be so because uh, you actually let go. If you're trying to think, 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 uh, first of all, you're going to be in the alpha pulse. Your, your, your brain pulse will be too fast to expand to incorporate what you only, in the periphery of your consciousness, have a frame of reference for. So we have to expand our consciousness in order to get the ideas and all the great thinkers talk about. Einstein took naps. So did Freud. You know, and I find that people often get their best ideas if you have a problem and you can't figure out how to do something. You get, the, you get some solution or some idea, usually right at that space when you're first waking up.